let me encourage someone up front God is going somewhere with you be patient with him be patient with him this is already a prophetic word for someone don't, don't rush God the thing that is coming upon your life is big don't, don't rush God carelessly are we together now a cow I think a cow is pregnant for 13 months am I right 13 months before it gives birth there are other animals and other lower creatures that the entire gestation period may be from a week to a few months depending on the size and the quality of what is being delivered. The long pregnancy communicates the quality of the prophecy you are about to deliver. Be patient with God. Are we together? Be patient with God. God is working out something that is transgenerational. God is working out something that for many of us will outlive the territories where he began with us from. This is how mighty men were raised. Sometimes it can be frustratingly long, but just wait with God. He said, ye who have continued with me, not ye who started with me, continued with me. Are we together now? One of the things that destroy people is when they begin to compete with themselves. Oh, we graduated together with so 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 person. Now the person has three cars, and I'm here just trying to press into God. Don't be foolish. Be discerning. You must understand that the program of God for people is very different. That person is a happy civil servant with his wife, but there is an anointing upon you that is for nations. The dealings cannot be the same. Are we together? There are times God will tell others, go and he will tell you, wait. Please, I'm, I'm speaking prophetically to someone tonight. It is important for you to see the magnitude of where he's taking you to. I look at my life today and I look at what God is doing. And I thank him for granting me the grace to stay with him. I look at how many lives are being blessed and have been blessed. Do you know people will reward you? For waiting. Yeah. Your waiting in itself is not a loss. You must stay and understand. There is no man who attempting to build a house will not sit down and count the cost, whether he has what it takes to complete it. This rush, rush life, please hear me. This life of wanting to do everything at once, it will land us in trouble. Are we together? There's a kind of fish that you have to hook it for a very long time. What's the name? The stock, stock, it is, no, not stock, it's stock fish. Huh? No, no, no. There, there's, I can't remember the name. You have to cook it for a long time if you really want to enjoy it. You can off the fire if you are tired and eat whatever is there. But if you are ready for a healthy meal, it will stretch your patience. The hunger is burning you from head to toe, but you wait. But you wait in hope. You see, that's the difference. You can wait in vain. Both of them look the same. That's what is painful. It is the end that will show whether you were waiting in vain or waiting in hope. Because those who are waiting in vain and those who are waiting in hope, everything looks exactly so. It is the end that justifies it. So, don't just wait foolishly. You wait in hope. Hallelujah. Let me, before we briefly touch on what the Lord put in my heart to bless us with, I just want to remind us again and again, I will keep doing this as God grants grace, as to why we are gathered here week in, week out. We've been doing this for many years. And for those who have been part of the ministry long before Koinonia, in fact, for many people, it, it was every day, every week, laboring. When, when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, you're asking, you mean this is how it happened? Nobody questions a student. They look at you after 15 years and they say, ah, where are you now? 
and you say, oh, finally, I just got admission. Oh, I'm writing why. Nobody says till now. They say, wow, congratulations. Although the time is long, but you are paying that price in hope. One day they will ask you, and you say, oh, sorry to tell you, I got a job five years ago. I'm now the director of the company. And say, ah, that little boy writing Jesse. Listen, God is going somewhere with you. You can choose to end your dealing with him. That's not going to hell. You will not go to hell. But you have pegged the extent to which God can do business with you. I've told God there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned. I break every limit. Take me as far as you can take me. Stretch me as far as I can be stretched until I can carry an anointing that will bless a generation. Thank God for that which you have done, but this is child's play. In the visions of the Lord, I keep seeing it again, that there is more. There is more. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, stretch me. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. I've seen signs and wonders, but this is not enough. I can't take what I have now to the nation. It will make me fight and quarrel. It will create competition. It's not unique enough. It's not distinguished enough. Oh, oh, oh. of compassion the problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy there are challenges in the lives of people that need it you have to move further than comfort you are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing young and old listen to me I'm speaking to you every man of God I know today who is doing mighty things for God who is being thanked and honored by nations they are only thanking the anointing. The price to have brought something forth is painful. It's not a gift. It's a school in the spirit. And the semester system does not work like school here. One course can take two days to finish. Another course can take four years to finish. You don't have a system with God and say okay after a particular predefined space of time no you can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved it's not backsliding it is the course content is bulky and you must be articulately trained now you can choose to think you are too you are too long and then graduate yourself the door is always open this lecturer does not close the door it is your passion that closes the door 
In this school of the spirit, is students that close the door. The Holy Spirit does not close it. It's wide open. You can choose to walk out and say, Lord, I'm tired, please. I'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around. And then you get angry and criticize others. Nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the Spirit. I learn this every day. As I have the privilege of studying history, studying the moves of God and watching the things that God does through my life. Let me tell you, the anointing is, is a commodity of inestimable worth. Never trivialize it. It is the secret of transgenerational relevance. You are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives, to shift systems. Then you are a blessing. Sympathizing with people may help psychologically, but it will not prefer solutions. Any man that trivializes the anointing is about to waste his time on earth. I tell you the truth. It has nothing to do with ministry. I went for a meeting. You know, something happened. I didn't even tell my people. They watched that happen. We came in this evening from a meeting. I've been ministering in a conference. And as I was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle, probably they are here. I may not know. Two families who came on Friday for Koinonia, trusting God for a miracle of the fruit of the womb. The husbands together with their wives and they were friends. They decided to come and Koinonia didn't hold on Friday. So they now paid the price. Went back to Kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning. And when the meeting was done, I think the protocol helped them. I was walking and they came. And um, they just looked at me. And compassion filled my heart. Now, whether or not I can solve their problem is another thing. And it's wickedness to claim I can solve it when I cannot. You see, let me tell you something. If you love God and you love people, you will pay the price for the anointing. That is the only way to bless people. I'm speaking to someone here. Here's a family experiencing this kind of challenge. They don't need counseling. They've had it. They are not daft people. I don't have to tell them just go and see doctor so 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 and so. I, I think they are adult enough. They are married. And they stood there and I watched the two women and watched their dear husband standing. And I was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family. Or brag like we always do as men of God. Lay hands on them and walk away. And let them go back to disappointment. And I looked at them. Years ago, I would have been in, I would have been in so much um, um, guilt. Because I knew I really wouldn't do anything about it. But as the days have unfolded, I have seen the spiritual synergy. That this thing is a formula. You can produce repeated results in the lives of people. I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year. This year, 2016, I caught it like a key and I said, this is it. I've got it. There is a key. When you search, you will find it. When you wait for it to come and meet you, you will never find it. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. We hope that God will carry the word and look for you. No hospital moves around looking for patients. The hospital is built. Even if you cannot walk, they will carry you there. There is a, a unit called emergency. But you have to get there. I see people many times and I see that we are not really passionate enough. I'm like a spiritual historian. I'm searching. What is the secret behind predictable results in this area? There must be a hunger. And I looked at them. And I told the women, hold my hands. And they held my hands. And I knew their wombs were open. Yeah. Not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling. I knew. There is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing. At that point, you will know that you are a blessing. You can see a man 20 years of misery 
and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you. And the moment they see you, they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended. Let me teach you something. I'm still going to use money. I hope you don't mind. Um, let me use money. Watch this. I think I've taught it here. The anointing is like money. There are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce. There are results that you are anointed is not enough. Everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased. But every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased. Watch this. I did the teaching this morning similar to this and I want to use that analogy. If I have, for instance, I'm not saying anointing is money, but if I have a thousand naira worth of the anointing, Ejimi, and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle, this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it. Are you getting the point now? So when you come to me, I will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result. Are we together? But if, thank you, if what you need is, um, let's say, a miracle, the equivalent of a phone of 50,000, am I anointed? Yes. But the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that I possess to solve that problem. Don't just say anointing is anointing. You are joking. How God anointed Jesus. Look at the extent. That's why he could do good. Every problem Jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing. So there was flawless result. I'm telling you this is it's a revelation God gave me. The reason why some things happen and some don't happen. Is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it. And those that are above it. So I can lay hands on you. Falling down is under this. But the miracle you need is above it. So you will fall down and yet not have the miracle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can come to me say, man of God, prophesy over my life. I lay hands on you and you fall. Because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit is, 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 the, is a basic dimension of the anointing. It does not mean you receive anything. So when you possess such a dimension of grace, such that the major problems of mankind is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve. At that point, you are a living blessing. The woman with the issue of blood, if she touched Peter, she would have kept bleeding. Correct? Yeah. But she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe. When you saw Jesus, you knew that was it. If you did not receive from Jesus, it was not a lapse of power. It was your dishonor and lack of discernment. Do we have such people in Zaria? Do we have such people in Nigeria? Men that you can carry your trouble with joy. With joy, not with suspicion. That the moment you land in Koinonia, before service starts, you are dancing because you said, the devil that did not stop me from coming here. That's the end of it. When people testify... I am touched, not just by the testimony, but I am humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with God and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges. This is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Listen, you know you possess an anointing when certain testimonies start repeating themselves. When you begin to share repeated testimonies. Then you know, the same way a woman cooks, and w before you get to her restaurant, psychologically you have tasted the food, because you know, she's not going to tell you sorry today, this year I'm born, she's left that level. That's why they put a price tag on their food. 
You buy rubbish for 200 naira. Anything you see, smoky or not, you manage it. Because you know what you paid for. But when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal, listen. What will make men leave their nation and come to you? Are you that important? Because you think your name is Joshua Selman? Are you that important? That a man can... Let me tell you something. Most people say people are busy. Nobody is busy. Everybody is looking for solution. If you become what they are running around looking for, I promise you, you can hold Koinonia every day by 10.30 to 3 a.m. in the morning. Notice the time. 10.30 to 3 a.m. Men will still come and you'll be wondering, are you not a government worker again? And they will say, the last person you prophesied to, his salary for 30 years came to him in one year. Why should I want to labor like that? You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. I'm telling you this. Learn it. Understand this. Speak grammar. Speak Hebrew words. Speak Greek. Do anything you want to do. If you cannot reveal Christ. He said great is the mystery of godliness. Christ is come in the flesh. The word becoming flesh. That men and women can carry their results. A man comes here not loving God. And sharing you speak. Something infects him. He goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again. Look how long it takes people in the body of Christ to adjust to spiritual things. They get born again in January. No passion in the atmosphere they got born again. It's in November they now consider being filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh no, there's no fire there. There is a way you can step into an anointing. Huh? The lifespan of your journey is one week. In one week, it will look like you've been born again for 10 years. Because of the impact of the grace you came under. I made a vow to myself. I said, I will never go to a ministry twice to reveal Christ here. Twice. No. No. That you invite me and say, come again. It's like pushing a wall. Let's keep pushing. Ah, ah. I prepare my spirit that if God grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area, then you know something dramatic will happen. Can men come to you? Are you that valuable? I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit. I watch people trivialize the anointing. And then somehow they think the key is just to receive lay none of hands. Oh man of God, I came with a seed of one million. Just lay hands on me. And then you go to another one, lay hands on me. And it's as if you are shopping for anointing. And then you bring it and say, now I have what it takes. You are joking. You are really joking. You believe spiritual things are that cheap? I came to challenge you. There is where God is taking you to. Don't, don't, don't rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. 4.69, you get 4.69. If you see, try it. Go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same results. And then you see that it's not so easy. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When Benihim came to Nigeria two weeks ago, look at the rush, look at the preparation. Literally, he kept the body of Christ at a standstill. Is it true that everything he shared, you have never had it? Will you be honest to say you have never had it? Is it true that what he taught you has never been heard? He has repeated it in many churches. He has taught series on it. So why seek him? Why crowd yourself outside in overflows? Why sit down and stream? Why cancel your programs? You didn't bring a man. You brought a grace. You brought an anointing. You brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around. Now, foolish people say, what is there about them? No. No. When you honor a man, you don't honor a body. You honor sacrifice. You honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded God space to move through that vessel in a mighty way. Listen. Listen. Look up. Let me tell you something. 
become David Dam. Let's assume David Dam has, let's assume that he has um, high blood pressure or HIV. Watch this. Don't you think God wants to heal him on Wednesday? Don't you think God wants to heal him next year? The desire of God to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give God space to release that dimension of his possibility. When that vessel appears, his healing has come. Why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes? Is it that that's the day God wanted to heal them? That's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in. There are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres. Just like that. But they never started that way. I shared a verse of scripture that I would want to share with us. The Lord, thank you, David. The Lord gave me an instruction to repeat a few portions of what I shared in the meeting today with us. And it will bless you. Luke 1, 80. Please, Luke chapter 1, verse 80. Luke chapter 1 verse 80. This was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference. And I want to establish it again and then we will pray. Luke chapter 1 media, please help us. I want us to pray tonight. Luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. Yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding. But the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit. Where men can lead their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher. And the child, John the Baptist, grew. He was ordained a prophet from prophecy. But he was born a child. And the child grew. When I found this scripture, I jumped. I said, so men can grow. Once upon a time I was not here, I grew. Meaning there are levels I should get to that I'm not yet there. I can grow. Growth is a secret. Growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities. I can grow. And the child, John, grew to become a prophet. And the child, naive, Barren of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit. No prophetic acumen and the child grew. Men can grow. I'm not hearing God now. You can grow. I'm not anointed now. I can grow. My company is nothing to write home about. It can grow. My marriage is nothing to write home about. It can grow. My home is full of children who are disturbing. They will grow. Growth is a mystery that when you understand, you know there is hope. And the child grew. And E and I, that little ministry that was meeting on the floor, grew to what it is now. And Koinonia is growing. Ten years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today, as excited as we are about today, we will nod and say, that's David Dam. And they say, who? That guy shaking the nations and David Dam grew. Ah, look at Mama, look at Femi Promise. These guys are just shaking nations in different territories. And you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down. And they and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman men can grow into the anointing 
men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit. The challenge is not where you are. The challenge is do you want to grow? There was a day, this guy, when he joined the worship team, he could not play keyboard like this. He challenged himself. His music director and his leaders challenged him. And he decided to grow. Now, when I learned how to play keyboard, I don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard. I began to play keyboard 1994, 94, 95, but I refused to grow. So although it's that long, where I stopped in the growth is still where I am. You can be born again for donkey years, but the peg you gave God is still where He will faithfully stand and wait for you. You can be ministry. And the highest miracle you will ever see is headache. Because that's where you stop. The moment you got to that level of your anointing, you graduated yourself, awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself. But there are those who even at PhD, they say, we are still undergraduates. Lord, we are staying with you. When I hear men like Benny Hinn saying, I still want more of his anointing, I say, my God, more of what? After shaking nations? Yes, some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance. Oh, I prophesied to sister so so so. It came to pass. You think that's what you are going to use to shift nations? You are joking. And the child. I want to show you that men don't just happen. And work strong in spirit. But the system is this. He was in the desert. He was in the place of training. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. Listen, please hear me. I taught in the conference where we went to on the coming revival. And I mean, I think some of you need to get our external ministration. Sometimes I wish that I carry all of you along. And uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings, very epochal teachings. And I taught yesterday on what we call the travail, the mystery of seasons, the mystery of the dealing of God in a man's life that brings the anointing 